Hey, yeah. this is Tommy Clefettis, and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives with Rodrigo, my Brazilian blood brother. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo, and my guest today is Tommy Clufettos. He has toured with Black Sabbath, Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne, Ted Newton, and now he has a new band called Tommy's Rock Trip. Tommy, thank you for joining us. Hey, Rodrigo. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. We are here to promote your new baby, a band called Tommy's Rock Trip. It must be a very It's definitely problem. a baby, I'll tell you that. <laughs> big, big, fat, whiny baby. Right? <laughs> yeah. It must be a very proud moment for you to release a debut album, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't mean to sound like a, a jerk about it, but when I do something, it's kind of over with. So I was, you know, once I got done recording it, then kind of the thrill is over because I like making music, not talking about it so much. Right. You know what I mean? It's fun yeah. doing it. You know, it took up two weeks of my time. I wish I would have made the record longer. Um, <laughs> Because I enjoy playing is all it is. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Talking yeah. about how great something is that you did is kind of awkward for me. You know what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But, but, uh, but let's talk about how great it is. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you, how would you compare doing your own thing uh, and spearheading a band like that versus playing as part of an established act? Well, the only reason I made this record is because of this whole worldwide shutdown we were in and yeah. I hadn't got to play music and I go and somebody approached me you know the guys over at Frontiers said do you want to make a record and I said well I've never done it before but man let's make some music you know like and then I kind of took it as a little challenge to myself I go I've never done my own songs I've never written a song I've never written lyrics I've never mm -hmm. put a band together on my own I've never done this I've never done this so what better time than now so I took <laughs> it as a little challenge yeah and an experiment to see if I could you know there's certain music that I love and I wanted to try to try to get what I love about that music into my own music not by copying or or making the guitar sounds like that, but the essence and the attitude I was out to capture. So that was intriguing to me. Right. And the debut, uh, like we said, is called Beat Up by Rock and Roll. How has the feedback yep. to it been so far? Every, well, I think people like it. You know, <laughs> I, think, I think it's a little refreshing um, because there's not a lot of music that's done this way that doesn't sound over-processed and very raw, you know, yeah. the, the way we, we recorded it is how they would record something in 1960. You know, we, we recorded it in a barn and a good buddy of mine has a little studio out by where I live, you know, maybe 30 minutes away in a barn. And we set up our amps facing each other. We didn't use any computer technology. We didn't cut and paste. We didn't even wear headphones. I literally just listened to the sound of the amps and they listened to the sound of my drums. So it was as if, and literally as we were playing in a rehearsal room or on a gig and they just recorded it. So it couldn't have been any more live actually. And it, it's, it's, it's much more work doing that way because we, you had to get it perfect from the first note. Well, not perfect because perfect is not what rock yeah. and roll is. About. Yeah. About. You had to get the vibe right from first note to last note. And if somebody screwed up that vibe, um, let's use the term a mistake, we had to do it totally again. So that's a lot more hard, hard work than saying, oh, I need to fix that measure. Let's just plop that in. There yeah. was none of that. Yeah. And, I, and that is what I wanted to do it that way because I wanted it to be very live and truthful and honest and raw. And it is what it is. And I'm happy with how it is. So I was only concerned about making a cool little rock and roll record that I would enjoy. And if people also enjoy it, if they get a little thrill out of it, then that's just a total bonus to me. Awesome. And you mentioned like being perfect or not making mistakes. I actually, it's something that I miss 
you know, from the 70s albums that I love. It's those little imperfections. Sometimes the tempo is sped up a little bit. And, and you know, nowadays that everything is oh, yeah, quantized and corrected. Oh, yeah, supposed to speed up. <laughs> yeah, of it's course. It's supposed to move. Even, you know, if you look back at Bach and Beethoven and, and there was things sped up and things created crescendos. And I, I'm noticing there's not even a lot of dynamics in mm -hmm. music anymore where it doesn't even break down softer in the verse. It doesn't get bigger in the chorus. It's just like one monotone dynamic. Yeah. So I wanted to... I'm very basic and, and to me, it's like sports, I'll, you know, all the basics in music, like dynamics and feel, and it's all gone with younger, younger music. Now to yeah. me, maybe I'm just an old fogey now, but <laughs> all those little basics are what makes things very powerful. And if you have those, you don't need all this new technology. You know, you don't need to have eight guitar tracks on an album. Most of this stuff, there's only one guitar track. Mm -hmm. And all my favorite records, you can hear the little, every little thing, because it's not cluttered up with all this overdubs and stuff like that. So that's what I was after. That's what I enjoy. So that's what I did. It's just my take on rock and roll. It doesn't awesome. mean it's better than anybody else. But I do think people... The, pe the people that have heard it, they're really struck by that and they like the approach and I think they feel it and they miss it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the title track for me, for example, is 100% ACDC. If someone told me this was a song from Power Age, for example, from ACDC. Except AC not as good. Except <laughs> not as good. Oh, come it's on. It's not this... bad, but, <laughs> but thank you for that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, it, I totally, I didn't, actually try to go for an acdc thing but mm. how can you not with the riff and the drum beat you know what i mean of course I mean, yeah i mean how cool would it i mean just think how cool it is that there's a style called acdc and everybody in the world knows what that means right you know what yeah. I mean? that's yeah. cool yeah um are you able to pick a favorite riff off the album for me it's nah, uh, you've got no, the I cash i got the flash but, well <laughs> I don't usually have any favorites of anything. I look at everything as one lump sum mm. because if you pick favorites, favorites song or a favorite gig, then that means the others are second in line. And I don't look at things that way, but only because she's the number one girl in my life. And, and mm. the song power of three is about her, my beautiful daughter. I picked the power of three because she loves that song so much. And to see her smile and dance, to the last song and dedicated to her about that album. That's why it's my favorite. Awesome. Awesome. I love that song. I think it's, it's a different pace or a different atmosphere from the rest of the album, right? It, it's just a cute little rock and roll nursery rhyme song dedicated to my daughter and awesome. my wife. <laughs> awesome. And what I love about the album is that it's, it sounds very upbeat, at least for the most part. Uh, take a song like Make Me Smile, for example. It makes me want to pick up my car and drive. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, a I mean, yeah, to yeah. me, rock and roll, can, it can be happy and it can be fun. And, yeah. You know, in the so-called heavy, even if you listen to Black Sabbath, there was hope at the end of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's dark and gloomy, but it's still hopeful and it's still, you know, they still had songs like rock and roll doctor that made you want to like, you, you know, go in the parking lot and have a party with your friends and enjoy the summer. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, for sure. rock and roll, yeah. it needs to have the light and shade of it in order to make the heavy song sound heavy. And, you know, like I, I like that when, when even hard rock is hopeful, like, on the first track, not to get too into the songs, but there's a song called Heavy Load, which is, you know, it's kind of about struggling with life. But mm -hmm. at the end of it, I go, oh, this is getting too dark. So <laughs> I wanted to, I added, I, I put the section at the very end where it just talks about, hey, we got through the dark clouds and now the sun's out and everything's cool. Like, you know, you got to have that side or it's just a total downer. Yeah. People, people yeah. I think they may want to think dark and gloomy, but at the end of the day, everybody wants to feel good about it. And that goes with music, too, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the members of the band. How did each one of those uh, members get involved with the project? They got involved. Well, first, the, the great singer I had on the album, Eric Dover, 
I know him through playing. We both played in Alice Cooper's band together. Um, and I always admired his voice. He's a great guitar player. Also, he didn't play guitar on the album, mm. but he has a kick ass rock and roll voice and an avant garde sound that I knew would lend itself to to the tunes that I was coming up with. And I knew he could cover all the bases because I didn't want to make a record with a bunch of different special guests. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't, I wasn't into it. Yeah. You may sell some more records or it may get a little more attention or another little dumb headline or whatever. But I, I, I if I was going to make a record, I wanted to make it truthful to me. And that meant making more of like a band record. And then I found three young guys that I knew maybe you had nobody out of as many people have heard of i knew they were talented and i knew they could follow my direction and they had the capabilities to play the music the way i wanted it to be played because there was a certain attitude and intensity that i wanted to capture on tape and that was very important to me and i think sometimes when you have younger guys who will who can be maybe be shaped a little bit into doing that it's a good way to go. And I'm, I'm glad I did because they played wonderfully on the album. Elliot Larongo played bass. Um, now Nakashima from Japan played guitar, rhythm guitar. Mm. And Hank J played lead guitar. Awesome. And one of the first songs that were revealed, uh, it's called Got to Play Some Rock and Roll. And the video you guys made looks like an episode of that 70s show. <laughs> Uh, I guess there's a magic to that period that transcends time, don't you think? I like when rock and rollers looked like musicians, yeah. you know, and, and, yeah. and amps were big and there was a lot of amps and there's big drums and, but not in an eighties way, just like, I mean, it, that's literally all my stuff and it's all my clothes. And we just showed up, Hey, just dress rock and roll and show up. And that's what, <laughs> you know, if we ever got to doing some gigs, that's what the gigs would be. It would be that. So I just wanted to like show people if there's, if gigs ever open up again, this is what we are. Awesome. And uh, you did take vocals on a few songs, right? I think three tracks. Uh, did you have any formal training as a singer or not? No, if you listen to it, you can tell there's definitely no formal training. <laughs> you know, I didn't set I didn't set out to sing it all on the album. Mm. The only reason it happened was because I was doing what's called scratch vocals, which are kind of guideline vocals, so Eric could learn the melodies and know wh- what I wanted him to do with the vocals. And in doing so, those three tracks, there was just something about them that it. it it sat okay with me. So I just left it how it was. Mm-hmm. I go, Oh, it sounds okay to me. It's not bothering me. So just leave it. And that's less work for Eric to do. Um, <laughs> and that being said, like I said, the power of three was about my lovely daughter. Who daughter. I love so much. So I had to sing that song. Right. Mm-hmm. And the song make me smile is about my lovely wife. Who's, you know, her and my daughter are the number one things in my life. So I had to sing that song. I'm not good at sending Valentine's Day cards. I'm not good <laughs> at love letters. Um, but that's my love letter to my wife. So I had to sing that song. And Beat Up by Rock and Roll, again, it was just a scratch vocal. And I liked the laid back, lazy feel it had to it. So I just said, screw it, leave it. Uh-huh. So I didn't set out to be a singer. It just kind of happened. And I'm not a singer. <laughs> I'm the first to tell you, but it, it was what it was because it was honest and truthful from my heart. So I decided to leave it. Awesome. Awesome. That's what counts, of course. Yeah. And uh, you filled some big shoes in the other bands you were part of. Uh, was that something that worried you when you were playing with? Yeah, Black Sabbath, I, feel big, I feel big. I feel big shoes, but now they got even bigger shoes to fill. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um. Go ahead with your question. I'm sorry. No, no. Being a smart ass. That's okay. But uh, is that something that worried you when you joined those bands? Like there was a never, legacy. Be- never. You never. No. Never worries me. Nope. Okay. And it doesn't uh, even come into my consciousness. If I can't do it, and I and if I don't think that I'm going to kick ass doing so, I don't do it. Awesome. And uh, can I ask you what would you say was your big break? The time when you set yourself like. I'll never have a day job ever again. Well, I didn't get into music to not have a day job. See, I think that's a big 
problem with musicians. They mm-hmm. do it because, oh, I don't have to work. Well, music <laughs> is 24 seven work and it's endless and there's not days yeah. off sometimes yeah. and there's not set schedule and it's, it's unrelenting pursuit of being the best that you can be. So, you know, you don't just get to go in at eight o'clock and get out at five or nine to five or whatever it is, you know, it's, it takes all of your efforts. So that was never my thinking. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I knew it was going to be a lifelong dedication and a lifelong pursuit that was never going to go away. You know, I've never made it and no gig was a bigger moment than the next step. You know, I started playing in my dad's group when I was 11 years old and that was my big great break. Oh, wow. Because I was, I was starting my footsteps towards my goal of continuing to be a musician. And luckily it's always worked out and it's been very slow, very, very slow, but it's, I'm always trying to steadily grow. So I understand what you're saying, but I, I want to make a point to point Mm. out that if younger musicians are listening to really think of the reasoning that you get into music, because if you get into it for the wrong reasons, it's really going to be hard for you. I got into music because I had no choice. There was no other option for me, meaning I loved it so much that I had to make it work. And I didn't have rich parents and I didn't have, you know, a silver spoon in my mouth, but I had no other option because I was born a musician and that's what I was going to do. So I think with that attitude, it will get you through whatever tough times or, or things come your way that will bring most people to their knees. Cause this is a son of a bitch business. <laughs> it's kind of what beat up by rock and roll is about. Um, it will beat you down, but you have to love that about it. You yeah. have to expect it. You have to crave it. You have to know it's coming, but you also have to know that it's a matter of time because if you're a survivor, you will work your way through it and bigger, better, better things are on the horizon. So that's kind of my take on rock and roll is kind of beat up by rock and roll. Good stuff. In a nutshell. Yeah, no, great lesson right there. Um, but what would you say was the biggest learning uh, you got from touring with uh, Alice Cooper, Black Sabbath, Ted Nugent, those established guys? That there's always a professionalism and there's always a right way to do things. Mm. And rock and roll is no different than playing baseball or being a computer scientist or whatever your job may be. There's a right way and the wrong way. And the good guys and the successful guys do it the right professional way. And there's a reason why they're big time. Good stuff. And uh, let me ask you about another band you're now involved with, The Dead Daisies. Uh, you have a few dates coming up in June and July. Have you started rehearsals yet or not? We, we start rehearsals um, end of May with those guys to kind of test out tunes and, mm. and uh, see what works, see what doesn't work, because none of us have played together before. So it should be interesting. <laughs> yeah. And I, who knows if any of us remember how to play our instruments? <laughs> we'll see about that, right? <laughs> yeah, we shall see. Yeah, I mean you're touring on the back. You know of the a reason I'm album. not on cam- the reason I'm not on camera is because I've I've gained 175 pounds. So it's <laughs> so a little did embarrassing. I. <laughs> I got to get on the treadmill coming up here. Yeah, preparing for the tour, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that extra weight. Yeah, but you're touring on the back of a great album, Holy Ground, uh, which you weren't a part of. But uh, that's I, I'm assuming that's the bulk of the material you're gonna play, right? I, I believe so. Yeah, I'm sure they'll play a bunch of stuff from there. They'll probably do half and half. I don't know, to be honest with you, but I mm. did hear the album and they did make a great album. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I actually reviewed it for, for our website, but uh, it's great. It's great that you're finally able to tour. I couldn't believe when that tour was scheduled, you know, because here in Canada, as you, as you know, we're still struggling with this COVID. So, right, yeah, right. And they're yeah. pretty strict about I have some friends in Canada. They're very strict up there, right? Yeah, it's still crazy. Yeah. In Ontario, yeah. we're having like 3,000 cases per day still. Oh, but we'll, yeah. see. we'll I, see. Actually, in Los Angeles, where it was horrible, now it's great. Yeah. You know? yeah. I just yeah. got my second vaccine a couple days ago, and I do feel better, at least mentally. Have you got yours? I got my first one last weekend. I feel great right. now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. You just, it kind of like takes a little bit of a weight off you. You know, if you remember when this yeah. thing first started, 
they made it sound like you walk outside and you're going to die just to breathe right? the air. You know yeah. what I mean? It was yeah. what a horrible time. I remember going to the grocery store at like five in the morning in the rain. And it's like packed with people and yeah. like elbow. It was horrible. But now things have finally calmed down a little bit. And it looks like the clouds are parting and hopefully we'll be getting back to some rock and roll shows here. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of live, I actually saw you live with Black Sabbath twice in Rio in 2013 and 2016. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, that was a wild time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, it sounded like you were given the freedom to make those songs yours and were not told to play note by note. Am I right in saying that or? No, those guys don't say anything. <laughs> they don't. At that level, I don't think they want to say anything. That mm. being said, I really do. I always do my homework, but I really sunk my teeth into that music. Mm. So I, I did what I, 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 I feel I was myself, but I also feel that what I did fit into the parameters of their music to make it sound how the fans want it, wanted it to be heard. You know, mm. I play a lot of the parts that are originally there because they're such iconic drum parts that Bill Ward came up with. Why yeah. would I change them? But I think what you're referring to, whether you know it or not, is the the vibe and the energy that makes it maybe come off like myself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the you show, you don't have to you don't have yeah. to change the parts to make things your own, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my impression is that at the end of those shows, you look, you look like there's nothing left in the tank. So I guess that's what you're referring to, right? Well, yeah, you <laughs> want to go up there and leave it all up there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you only get one shot. You could be dead the next day. So I, when I play drums, it's, it's, it's my life up there. So I am, I'm going to give it up, you yeah. know, because people are paying hard earned money. doesn't matter if I'm sick doesn't matter if I had a bad day. I leave all that off of the stage. When I walk on the stage, it's showtime. Yeah. And I think the fact that uh, Black Sabbath guys gave you a solo spot is evidence that they trusted you in what you were doing, right? So, Or, or they just wanted to take a break. One of the two. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, a yeah. combination of both. <laughs> no, no. It's very nice of them to give me a solo. And and they just let me go, go for it. They kept telling me, make it longer. Make it longer. <laughs> Right. We need that yeah. break. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which is what my wife always tells me. Oh, <laughs> that's what she said. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of shows, uh, what's the plan now aside from the dead days is, I mean, are you able or do you have intentions of hitting the road uh, with Tommy's rock trip or not? I, I don't have any in intentions, but I don't not have any intentions. Mm. Uh, it's such a crazy world right now. Things are still, I feel a bit away from gearing certain things so if something comes up and they got electricity then i'll go <laughs> plug in and play awesome and uh in terms of recording what is next for you any future plans that you can mention right I, now I don't, i don't know what tomorrow brings right now to be honest with you okay all right well Tommy, it has been a pleasure, man. This was my last question. Uh, I know you can't come to Canada right now, but I can't wait to see you live here in Toronto as soon as possible. Hey, Rodrigo, thank you so much for taking the time. I can't wait to see you guys up in Canada because whenever I come to Canada, I've been coming there since before my teens and playing music, and it's always a little wilder. They always get a little more drunk. They always <laughs> raise their fists a little more. They always jump a little more up and down, and they always yell and appreciate a little more. So us Americans love coming up and playing up for those Canadian rockers. I can't wait to see you guys. Thank you so much for having me on your show. If you guys listen to my album i hope you enjoy it i had a great time making it thank you everybody out there we can't wait to see you stay safe stay healthy make a lots of money buy cool things and <laughs> be good thank you so much tommy take care all right thanks buddy I'll cheers back. bye bye okay everyone thank you for tuning in and i hope you enjoyed this interview with tommy clofettos the interview is available on many different platforms youtube itunes stitcher Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Also, please follow us on Twitter and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's wrap it up with Beat Up by Rock and Roll, the title track of the debut album of Tommy's Rock Trip. Stay safe and see you next time. <laughs>
They say a man was a trick man When you're up on the stage Just let your inhibitions out Strong loose from a cage Do what I want Pay what I feel I'm a real big deal But I got beat up Beat up by rock and roll This makes perfect Or so back in the day But when I moved to the West Coast, man No one could play They try to change my style, man But I'm a bit too proud Don't let the drama get you get With the lively crowd Beat up, 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 beat up